He owed me a lot of money, too. What? Sarah didn't even like this guy. He, she had a special name for him. I can't even say it. Anyway, <laughs> I said, I found Jesus. No, actually, Jesus found me. Yeah. Jesus wasn't lost. I was lost. Uh, but anyway, so to walk accordingly, we got to stay in the seated position and and to do the things that are impossible to us because it is not in our nature. It, we can't even apprehend the things that God has commanded us to do unless we have the new mind and the new man. That's why we so totally got to be like in the life of Christ, enveloped totally in Him, and it's, it is possible. It is so possible. To live this life and just have love. Can you imagine somebody like suing you and you go, oh, okay. Well, Jesus put it this way. Now they sue for a lot more. But he said if they sue you for your coat, give them your cloak. Is that or is it vice versa? Anyway, and if they and if they asked you to go one, go two miles. But th that's not the end of it. It's like okay, I did, I did, uh, I did a hundred percent more, so we're good. No, it's not. That's not. That's not the Christian walk of walking in Him. It's like the second mile is just the precursor to the third and the fourth and so on. It's, it's, it's not, okay, I, f I fulfill my duties. We've got to get that because that's the old stinking thinking mindset. We've got to live this life and let Him live through us because it will totally... It's not like, okay, we're trying to attain a, sp uh, 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 attain a spiritual status here. I mean, was it Peter who said if our, our brother offends us, forgive him seven times in one day? He thought he was being real spiritual and Jesus was going to pat him on the back or something. And he said, it probably was like Peter, man, of all people, you should got this. He said, I don't say seven, but I say seven times 70, which is 490. That's a lot of offense in one day. But I think Jesus was trying to make a point. So he exaggerates it and puts it so far out there. Look, you just got to live your life. And, and your, your, your duty as a lover is never done. Because there's always some more to, loving to be done. And how much love is it going to take to break through that, that ice wall? You know what I'm saying? Above and beyond. Did, did Jesus just do what was necessary and that was it? He was so extreme. He just didn't come to the planet and become part of the creation that he created. He was made like us. In the scripture it says that. I'm amazed. I look at that. He was made like us in all things. And he suffered like us in all things. And then he suffered as us in all things because he took the total punishment on our behalf. I'm not even going to get this one done. I'm, uh, so, thinking about this, this, this whole body being joined together in every joint that supplies to one another for the effect, effectual work, which is the ministry, which is getting to the edification of the body of Christ. And when we become edified, Oh my God, we are lifted up. We are lifted up like what David used that out of that miry clay that held us in bondage and in shame. And he lifts us up. Not only does he put our name on a roll, he plants our feet on the rock, which is him. He is the foundation. So you get your name on the rock. No, you get your name on the roll and your feet on the rock. Rock and roll. There we go. There's a song in there somewhere. <laughs> I think I heard one like that before. Anyway, so John 15, 1 says this, I am the vine, and my father is the vine dresser. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to skip over some of these, but I, I just want you to get the idea here. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Listen closely to this. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. So, okay, it's going to be painful either way. 
But it's a lot better to get pruned than it is to get taken away. Because the, the ones that don't bear fruit, what do they do with the, the those branches? They toss them into the fire and get rid of them. So get ready for pruning if you're bearing fruit. Because he wants you to produce even more and he's trying to grow you up. But, but it is the vine and the vine dresser's responsibility to bring us into that place of maturity. He says, I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me... Here it is. Here it is again. This is, G this is in the red, babe. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. There you go. So, thank you very much, Lonnie Nick. So, pick a seat. <laughs> we get so puffed up. Especially, I remember getting big-headed over praying for somebody and they get healed. Boy, I had to get checked on that one. He's the healer. I'm just the voice that he speaks through. Yeah. Uh, if you abide in me, listen to this now. This is where, because now we're growing up. And we, we, he's using this word abide, which means to live in, to set up house. You're abiding because your abode is there. Okay? Same thing. And so your house is in him he prepared a mansion for you but the thing is move in right now and begin to abide in him in heavenly places right now because if you want the power and the authority of heaven you got to move in there now you got to leave the old uh, sin country behind and go into the grace sovereign territory of the heavenlies and set up your housing there now and move on in and leave that other country behind. Because when you came up through that water baptism, that is the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And now you have a new life in a new land, which is grace-filled, sovereign territory, that is called the kingdom of heaven. And I'm not waiting to go there someday. I'm in it right now. Someday I'm just going to step over into the eternals. and But I'm there now. Not waiting to go there someday. It's so silly when I hear people say, well, I'm just waiting to die and go to heaven. Why don't you move in now? It's a wonderful place. It's a powerful place. It's a beautiful place. You can visit with him right now. I just want to see Jesus. Well, then go see him. He calls you by name. Say, here I am. When he wakes you up, just don't think you're having a bad night. Say, is that you, Jesus? And if you don't hear nothing, then maybe it is a bad night. Get up, use the restroom, go back to bed. But if he begins to speak down in your heart, and here, don't try to wake up too much, because your brain wakes up. You hear what I'm saying? Keep your brain out of the way and learn to hear his voice in the night. Because that way your heart, your spirit's open, and the voice of God will go right in. And you'll hear great, crazy, wild things that your mind could have never thought of. That's when I begin to realize it was God talking to me. You know, after I got to know the voice of God a little better... I've realized he was talking to me all the time. He was the one who spared my life. I thought I was just having, you know, discernment on danger. It was God who spared my life. He made me revisit those. And he goes, who do you think told you that? Because, you see, I thought, you know, finally I got back to God, and you know, and he had left me. And he goes, I never left you. You left me. He doesn't leave us. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And your silly backsliding. Your foolish fall. Here's the thing. Don't keep tripping. Looking back at that one, I blew it the other day, and there goes seven months of sobriety. Oh, shut up and get over it and get your eyes back on Jesus and keep straight. Don't make excuse to go do something. You are people of no excuse. There's more power in you. God put more power in your will than you can ever imagine. Begin to use it in accordance with his will. Use it in accordance with his what he wants. 
being obedient to him. There's power in that. Listen to this. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. That's power. That's authority. But it only comes by a seated position. It only comes by realizing who he is in you and surrendering to his life and let go of your own. He who tries to save his life will lose it. But he who surrenders his life for the Lord's sake will gain it eternally. I said eternally. That's forever and ever without end. See, I like that one. I think I want the ongoing life forever and ever. Well, it's in Jesus. Now listen to what he says. John 15, 9. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. In other words, don't depart from it. Walk in it. Sit in it. Sleep in it. Eat in it. Live in it. Don't let nothing take it from you. The world didn't give it to you. Why are you going to let a circumstance or someone or something take it away? Don't do that. It's much more powerful than you think because it's spiritual. It's more powerful than everything can bind on this earth. But we've got to recognize the source and keep our eyes on him. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. See that obedience thing there? At one point, Jesus turned around to his disciples, and he said, why do you call me Lord, and you don't do what I tell you? See, Lord means boss. And if your boss tells you to do something, you do it, right? So in that place, you've got to put Lord, Master, and, and if you need to, Boss. And he speaks to your heart to do something. Don't get all weird and tripping over yourself. And especially as you have a, this relationship and you, you want to answer the call and you want to move forward in the things God has prepared for you, you've got to obey and don't be scared. I mean, it's scary, uh, you know. But don't let that stop you. One time, God told me to go talk to this couple it was when we was going to Liberty Towers, and I was in a hurry, and I was on my Harley, and I had to get to the church, and I was starved. I hadn't ate all day. So I thought, man, I better stop and get a taco over there. And there was a couple sitting there, and God said, I've called them, and uh, they've been sitting in the ministry. He started just downloading all this stuff about them, and I'm, like, looking at them, and I'm thinking, I'm in, I, I'm in a hurry. i got to go. And he says, you go over there and tell them that... Uh, it's time for them to step out and not to be fearful. And I was walking toward the door, and the Lord says to me, are you telling me that you're going to walk out of here and disobey me, and you're supposed to preach tonight? And I'm like, oh, geez. And so now I'm kind of frustrated, and so I didn't go over in the right way. So I walk over to him, and, I, and, and, and here I am in the leathers and everything, and I said, so you want to know? You want to hear it? And they go, Huh? And I go, you're about ready to make a decision, but you're scared because you're comfortable under the pastor that you are, but God's called you to do something. And they like, oh, I mean, both of them. Oh, my God. You, who are you? <laughs> and I go, that doesn't matter. That's not important. You need to start moving in faith because he has apprehended you by his grace and he's ready to move you into something and it will affect the lives of hundreds of people. And so you just need to shut up and obey. There you go. And they're both crying by now. And I just turned around and walked out and got on my Harley and left. But there is no, you know, disobeying is not an option. Because I can't do this if I disobey God. I got to have Holy Spirit. I got to, got to, got to have the Holy Ghost on me or I can't do this because then it would be a fake and a fraud. It doesn't matter how good it sounded or anything else. If the Holy Spirit isn't in it, it's lifeless. I might stir your emotions or make you feel good for a moment, but what does that do for the eternals? It's got to have wind on it, baby. Like when I'm riding my Harley, you feel the wind of the anointing because the Holy Spirit, He's real and He's here and He's in you and He's in me. Amen. To be continued. <laughs> I went longer than I meant to. Uh, uh, did I finish? Did I finish John though? Hang on. Yeah, I did. Abide in his love. 
Okay, so we've got more to even say about that. But anyway, come to the table. Come to the Lord's table and have communion and be joined together with him. His body was broken so that you might be made perfect or made complete in him. And without the shedding of his blood, there is no remission of sin. Come and receive the table of the Lord. Hey, it's Nancy's birthday this weekend, too. That's why she always remembers my... <laughs> well, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Nancy. <laughs> huh? Did you feel it? 